The occurrence of post-operative residual cortex can pose a significant challenge in the post-operative period. When this is associated with an associated posterior capsular rupture, the challenge gets worse because there's always a possibility of this residual cortex dropping back into the posterior segment. Here's one such case which I'd like to discuss with you. This patient was dilated on day 5 after surgery and this is what we found. There was significant residual cortex all around the periphery, but if you look more closely, the patient actually had an associated posterior capsular rupture nasally. We decided to take the patient up for a surgical removal of the residual cortex. We now move to watching the surgery. Now, since this case was primarily managed by another surgeon, I always choose to make incisions at a location and of the size that enhances my ergonomic ease intraoperatively. I then introduce some viscoelastic into the anterior chamber to maintain space as well as coat the endothelium to protect it from damage. I'd now like to discuss my plan. My plan is to first use a bimanual irrigation aspiration and remove the cortex from that part of the periphery where there is no rent. After which, I plan to remove the cortex which is overlying the rent with the help of a vitrector. Let's see how we go ahead with this surgery. We now watch the removal of the cortex from the area where there is no rent. The irrigation maintains the anterior chamber and affords globe stability. The aspiration cannula is introduced via a port opposite this cortex and under direct visualization goes deep to the pupillary edge, deep to the anterior capsular edge, pulls on the cortex, draws it to the center and aspirates it subsequently. On the completion of the cortex removal, the aspiration cannula is removed from the eye and a viscofluid exchange performed. It's important to remember that you do have an existing nasal PCR. Therefore, it's very important to me to perform a viscofluid exchange at each point that the irrigation comes out of the eye so as to prevent any sudden shallowing of the anterior chamber and a possible enlargement of the PCR. At this point, I'd like you to note that the residual cortex at the 4 o'clock position exactly overlies the PCR. Now let's see how we manage this. In order to prevent any vitreous herniation through the PCR, I now choose to inject a dispersive viscoelastic behind the IOL in the area of the PCR. The plan is to remove the cortex with the vitrector, which we plan to introduce from the opposite side. In order to enable the smooth entry of the 20 gauge cutter, the incision is now enlarged. The irrigation is introduced from the left side and watch how the 20 gauge cutter is introduced into the anterior chamber behind the IOL, goes into the area of the residual cortex overlying the rent and cuts and removes the residual cortex. Having completed the removal of the cortex, the vitrectomy cutter is now drawn out of the eye. Now, since there is the possibility of some residual visco, the excess viscoelastic is removed with the help of bimanual irrigation aspiration. Towards the end of the visco wash, I notice a strand of vitreous at the 9 o'clock position. Now, here's how I address this. While maintaining the irrigation still in the eye held in the non-dominant hand, I introduce an intraocular scissors into the anterior chamber and note how I go deep to the pupillary plane and cut this vitreous strand. Having efficiently cut the vitreous strand, I now proceed to hydrating first the left and then after removal of the irrigation, the right paracentesis incision. I then inject some intracameral carbonyl and watch how the pupil starts to go down. This gives me the confidence that there are no residual strands of vitreous. At the end of this, I then wash out the intracameral pilocarpine and finally inject some intracameral moxifloxacin in the eye. This is the end result that I have achieved. Therefore, when faced with residual cortex, one, almost always it needs to be removed because it always has a chance of increasing the inflammation in the post-operative period. It is extremely important to ascertain what is the extent of the residual cortex, the integrity of the anterior capsular rim, and equally importantly, the integrity of the posterior capsule. Then and only then can you strategize the way in which you want to remove this residual cortex. 
I do hope you found this video tutorial useful. Thank you.